cheap house plants. Are they cheap in quality or just cheap in price? Stay tuned. How's it going guys? Andy here. Welcome back to The Potting Shed. Today I want to talk to you about cheap house plants. Now, when we think about cheap things, quite often what springs to mind is, well, you get what you pay for. It's going to be cheap quality. But let's think about this for a minute. A house plant is something that is simply grown. You can't really get a cheap quality house plant per se because mainly, especially here in the UK, there will be a selection of growers and they are intensively grown en masse so that they are grown to a price and then they are sold. And when they're sold, they're sold to um, houseplant shops, they're sold to garden centers, they're sold to supermarkets, and they all get the same stock. So inherently, there's no such thing as a cheap houseplant, but there is such a thing as a houseplant that's more expensive than another one. So that's what I wanted to talk to you today about the cost of houseplants, because I've got to tell you, this hobby of ours can get quite expensive. Some of the plants I've got, the, the big blue star fern that I bought, I paid £30 for. So that's like $40, somewhere along those lines. And uh, an aspidistra, like the one you see behind me, you can get one slightly bigger than that. It's going to cost you £50 to £60. Generally, the cost of these is because it takes a long time to get a big mature plant, uh, a long time to grow, which means more cost for the um, grower uh, in keeping it and watering it and et cetera, et cetera. So it makes sense that the ones that take the longest are going to be more expensive. But if you've got less money and more time and you enjoy the hobby, then you could try and buy the same plant in a smaller size. For example, This is another blue star fern. Yes, I already have a huge blue star fern. Why, Andy, do you have another one? The reason why I have another one is because I bought this for £2.50. £2.50. And look at it. It is as happy and as healthy as ever. And this isn't just straight out of the grow where it's going to fall apart within a few weeks. I've had this now for... Hmm probably two months, I would say something like this. It's had its quarantine period and it's just remained really, really happy. There's not a leaf out of place. Now, it obviously didn't come in this pot. This is my pot. I'm not 100% sure. Let me know down in the comments what you think about this plant and this pot. I love the pot. I love the pot. I love the plant. I'm not sure about the two together yet. It's just sat inside here right now. Um, it would be a little bit higher up if it was properly planted, but we'll have to see. I'm not entirely sure. But the point I was trying to make is you could buy a smaller blue star fern for a fraction of the cost of the big one. Now, yes, it's going to take a while before it's going to be three or four times the size of this, but you get to enjoy it in your home whilst it's still growing. And so if you don't want to buy 10 houseplants at 30, 40, 50 pounds, and you'd rather buy 20 houseplants at two pounds 50, your hobby is going to be considerably cheaper. Now, obviously it depends on what you've got to spend. And obviously if you want to create a look in your home and a certain size houseplant is what is going to fit there, then obviously it benefits you to buy something already the size and shape so you know what you're looking at. You can put it in there and you get that effect straight away. I understand that and I think that's a good idea. Obviously you're gonna pay a lot more money for that plant, but you get the instant results. So in that case, I can understand paying more. But when you look at such a beautiful plant like this for £2.50, it is such a crazy amount of money. Now I would say, if this plant was in like a dedicated house plant shop, it's probably going to be 10, 12 pounds, that sort of money. Or even in a garden centre, you'll probably pay that much. I bought this particular plant from a supermarket and I think they get the very best prices because when you have the supermarkets that are chains, they'll probably make a deal with a house plant grower and they will probably make one big volume deal across, I don't know, either one batch at a time and so they'll be able to buy the the growers entire stock of what they've got at the moment and obviously they're going to get the very best prices when they do this and so 
if you're looking for the cheapest plants, then potentially supermarkets are a really good place to go. Now, the one thing you do have to remember is if that plant stays in that supermarket for longer than a few days, it's gonna to start to deteriorate because those people will not know how to look after them. They won't have the proper light. Uh, they may be a bit too cold where they are. And uh, sometimes they keep them outside as people are walking in. And certainly in the UK in the winter, which is when I pick this up, it's not the right conditions for this. And so they won't last long. But if you can get them in the first few days when they first come in, you can get a perfectly healthy plant. Now, secondly, like I said, if you buy this from a specialist houseplant shop or something like this, it's going to cost you a lot more. But I'm not saying don't go there because when you go to a place like that, you get the specialist knowledge, advice and help. So if you're looking for that, if you want some uh, advice about the best plant for where you want to keep it and some advice about how to look after it, then definitely the houseplant shop is the place to go. Um, and maybe you can justify spending the extra few pounds on the plant that is invariably going to be more expensive. They won't have the same bulk buying potential and that's all they sell. So they have to make more money because they're only selling houseplants. They're not selling the myriad of retail items that a supermarket has. So you will always pay more, but you're getting the service and the experience from those sort of people that will be happy to help you and guide you and give you their knowledge and experience. So if that is of value to you, then maybe you'll pay a bit more from the specialist shop. Just something to think about. If you've literally, you're a student, you've got very little money, but you want to have something nice in your living space, and you're prepared to make a few mistakes, you can make a mistake with a £2.50 plant because it's not going to cost you that much money. But it's just something to think about. And a garden centre is probably somewhere in the middle. They probably get better deals because they're buying a lot more plants, but they're still not going to get the same sort of deals as a supermarket. And maybe there will be some people who work in their houseplant area that are going to have some good knowledge um, of looking after the houseplants that you can ask their advice from. So that's cool too. But all I wanted to do in this video is show you the difference that there really can be a huge difference in price. And really it doesn't come down to quality. It just comes down to how much uh, the person can buy it for in the first place. And on volume, you're always going to get better prices, which means you can offer that to the customer. And this is a good example. Um, you know, yes, it's going to take a lot longer to grow into a big plant, but I've got this in my bathroom and it looks fantastic and has already given me a lot of pleasure for £2.50. Can't go wrong with that. Here is another example. This is my Calathea Freddy that I bought from a garden centre actually, and it was about two or three leaves. It was right down here, that sort of, uh, that sort of size. And this was $1.99, $2.99, something like that. It was probably over a year ago, I can't remember. That probably was about a year ago because I've only been making these videos for just over a year and I've already featured this one. But in its time, it's probably grown three times the size and we've gone through winter at the moment so it's going to be growing the slowest it would grow and once we get into the spring and summer this is really going to crack on again and it's quite fast growing from what I've seen so far so I can really see this plant getting to quite a decent size in a you know in this next growing season in this next year I can see this doubling or even tripling its size which is great and for the a few pounds it's going to cost you you know, you get to enjoy the plant, you get to learn. Uh, and if, if you um, make a mistake, it's not gonna cost you very much. So there's lots of benefits to buying these cheaper plants. I'm just show you those leaf shapes and color. It's fantastic. I'm quite pleased with this one. Um, I don't have that many Calathea and I'm still learning how to look after them. And this one lives in my office uh, on my desk and I'm quite pleased at the lack of brown leaf tips on this one, uh, considering they can be a little bit um, picky about where they live and the atmosphere and the humidity. There's no, uh, I don't have uh, a humidity tray with this one. I do give it a bit of a spray from time to time because I have a spray bottle in my office anyway, but it seems 
it seems fairly happy and I'm pleased with that. So again, for a small amount of money, you get to enjoy it, but it's still going to be probably three years before it gets to a big mature adult size at a complete guess. I don't know. And um, obviously, if you pay 16 or 18 or 20 pounds, then you're cutting the corner of those three years it's got to take. It depends what you want. If you just want to enjoy the plant maybe this is better because it's a smaller one you can have it in your bedroom or in your office or in a smaller room rather than something that's going to be maybe three times the height where it would need a uh, bigger space so just something to think about what do you think about cheaper house plants are they worth it or would you rather spend more money on a, a more expensive plant and get the overall look straight away I guess if we're in the hobby, we enjoy growing houseplants. And so growing them is a big part of what we're doing. And if you buy something and it's already done, and it's already the full size, then for me, it takes a bit of the fun out of it. I like a challenge. I like to grow plants that are not as easy to grow because it's more satisfying if you can get them to grow happily and nicely. And it just adds a little bit more interest into the hobby. And these plants behind me are just a few examples of what you can get. Now, full disclosure, I don't pay for all my house plants. Uh, some of them are given to me. And so I get house plants a bit cheaper anyway, uh, but some of them do. The big blue star fern I paid 30 pounds for, and I'm happy to because it's such a handsome looking plant. But really, this hobby should be available to everyone. So if you haven't got as much money and you've been, look at some, you've been looking at some of these uh, videos on YouTube and you think, oh, they're amazing, I wish I could afford one. You can, <laughs> but it's just gonna be a little bit smaller. But really, this is a fantastic plant and I'm enjoying this just as much as its full-sized bigger brother. So, if you've been thinking like that, I'd love to have a plant but like that, but I can't afford it, just keep your eyes open. Um, there are opportunities uh, out there and it really does depend on the time of year and, and what the grower has at the moment. And maybe if you go into a supermarket, they might not have some of these houseplants available, but maybe next week they will or the week after or next month. So I think a good tip is to keep coming back and keep checking your local supermarkets and I don't know, even places like Ikea have a decent houseplant selection these days. So there's all sorts of places where you can buy houseplants and they don't have to be a specialist grower. But to, for the sake of balance, you know, don't forget your specialist houseplant shops. They're a really good resource of information and knowledge and experience. And if you just go for the cheaper ones, then they're going to struggle as well. So, um, you know, it's if for the sake of balance, I think those shops should also be supported because they often do have those more interesting and rarer plants that you can find. So um, if you have a specialist house plant shop near you, then I would recommend at least a visit and a chat with them because uh, you never know what you might discover. So yeah, let me know in the comments what you think. Have you got some cheap houseplant deals in the past. Let me know what you think about that pot, please. I'm undecided, I'm not sure. Maybe a different plant will suit that pot, I don't know. But anyway, that's it for now. I'm rambling, so I'm gonna wrap it up. Thank you for watching. I apologize for my winter gear. We're still in the winter here in the UK. It's still pretty chilly. And to be honest with you, because of you know what, I haven't had a haircut in over a year and this, is just a complete mess under there. So <laughs> it's a lot easier to wear a woolly hat. All right, guys, that's it for now. Thank you once again for watching. I appreciate all of you subscribing and clicking that thumbs up button. It really does make a difference. And I will catch you very soon on another video. Bye for now.